If you're wealthy and you get sick, you want to be in Houston, Texas. We have the greatest medical complex in the world, and Houston has literally the highest percentage of children without health insurance of any major city in America. That captures in a nutshell, it seems to me, what is central to the challenge of healthcare delivery, but more broadly, central to the challenge of building a viable society in the 21st century. So people come from all over the world to access the quality health care that's provided at the Texas Medical Center. But in the shadow of the Texas Medical Center, you have communities where the life expectancy rate in certain zip codes is 24 years less. We are really good about providing care to the sickest of the sick. We're not very good, we're not equipped to deliver services that prevent those problems. That's where we have to work hand in glove with the city to ensure that our resources are coordinated and connected in some new ways. That's where we're gonna be most impactful at addressing some of the core issues like food deserts, like access to preventative services. Access for people in Houston that are uninsured, underinsured, has been a pretty big problem through the whole pandemic. Those people that sort of live on the functional margins of our health system, I believe delayed a lot of care, didn't get their routine uh, screenings, didn't attend to things that needed to be taken care of, and that will have consequences down the line. Generally, you want to fix things early, and when you, when you attend to them earlier, they tend to cause less damage. We've, we've gotten back to going to restaurants and theaters and sporting events. We have to get back to getting our screening colonoscopies, getting our mammographies, taking care of our health needs, reinstituting your relationship with your health system and provider. A lot of those service level jobs that have to be done face to face are done by people that are in that low insurance, no insurance sort of market. And throughout the pandemic, had no choice but to be out in the stew of COVID-19 and expose themselves to potentially getting infected. Texas is one of the few states that voted no to expanding Medicaid. And the result is those inequalities in income and opportunity translate into much lower life expectancies and lack of access to the health care. That, that you end up going to the emergency rooms only after you're much sicker than you would have been had you had the kind of health insurance that you needed. So I think we all understand this is not sustainable for Houston. This is not going to be a great city in the 21st century prepared to compete in the global economy if it doesn't make much greater and sustained and effective investments in the opportunities for kids growing up in the poorer sections of the city. At the end of the day, we have to ensure that our community has access to basic health services and that there's some degree of health coverage or health insurance for those services. One in five Texans do not have health insurance. What that means is that we have 20% of our population receiving care in our emergency rooms. We have to change that. That is the most expensive place that we can provide care in our entire delivery system. So our ability to begin to address that issue not only reduces cost of care for everyone, but it also puts us in a position to take better care of everyone. The right thing is for people to get things taken care of promptly. Everybody gets the same level of care and fewest number of people possible advance to that level where they require heroic care of the Texas Medical Center. That most of the problems are addressed before they become major problems. Ensuring that everyone has access to health care is incredibly important. Providing that care is equally complicated. We each have a, a different worldview, a different context. At the core, this is about respect about the ability to seek first to understand, and then be in a position to deliver information in a way that people can accept and understand. It's difficult to do. It requires conscious thought and effort. It doesn't happen by accident. Recognizing where these health disparities are, that's important. But then once you recognize them, the question then, what type of investments, what type of resources, are going to be put into these communities, not just to touch on them, but to be transformational in terms of people's health care, to remove the just disparities, the inequities, and bring these communities up. We have to have the ability to reach people where they're at. We have to have the ability to communicate in a way that people understand. We have to design facilities that accommodate various cultural views about health care. They're very different perspectives. 
is going to require a significant amount of investments and resources, and not just in terms of dollars and cents, but in terms of people themselves. I'm optimistic, but it won't be done overnight. It won't be done in a matter of months. It's going to take, you know, years, but you got to start in a very real, substantive way right now.